an international failure whose resume lacks that Romario to his Baresi, or a Man Mountain who is this generation's Don Elias Figueroa and the EPL's undisputed goal centre back. Just how good is Virgil van Dijk? High stakes, narrow margins. Robertson, what a ball. Darwin Nunes saved by In possession, van Dijk is as heavily involved with a ball player as someone like Marquinhos, who, in my opinion, is more proactive in possession. His pass participation is also inferior to Ruben Diaz. That could also be explained by the fact that City are more likely to involve Diaz and Edison in the build-up, whereas Van Dijk tends to move the ball forward quicker. Furthermore, in terms of movement off the ball, Van Dijk's pretty static and that explains why his pass volume is quite low. In fact, I'd say that this immobility is one of the reasons why I don't really rate him as a goal ball-playing defender in the mould of the great Libero's of the past, your Beckenbauer's, more Baresi's career, a lot more active in possession and better at making options for their teammates. On a more positive note, if you look at Van Dijk's forward pass ratio versus his pass volume, we can see that he's naturally someone who is impatient but in a good way and wants to progress the game. One in three passes go forward, he doesn't just pass for passing's sake. As we can see from the table here, he's a meaningful passer out from the back. When he does get on the ball, it's progressive. And whilst he's not as good as Marquinhos, he's still an elite centre-back in terms of pushing the ball on to attacking areas. In terms of the eye test, we can see that Van Dijk is someone who makes decisions pretty quickly. I'd say quicker than the Rio Ferdinand in his prime, who will take a bit more time to assess the options in front of him. But that's probably also aided by the fact that Liverpool have a more automated build-up than United did under Fergie. But even from his footage at Celtic, Southampton, we can see that Van Dijk is very egoless with the ball at his feet. He doesn't really have a huge desire to demonstrate how much of a baller he is with the ball. He's just happy to be efficient and just get on with it. Now on the plus side, that makes him perfectly suited for a team that just wants to play with a high tempo. But he isn't going to be that centre-back who redefines the game in a build-up sense. He's not someone that I can see becoming a Beckenbauer-type roaming controller from the back. Fabinho. Van Dijk. Roll through here for Andy Robertson. Down goes. This is ridiculous. I mean, he, he's closed down really. Carrying on in the same efficient vein, we can see that in terms of his ball carrying that Van Dijk doesn't look to ball carry often. Whilst he doesn't take much responsibility for driving the ball, he's got a high success rate. So this means he's a player who picks and chooses the right moment when to drive with the ball and more often than not, he gets it right, albeit he's no Lucio with the ball. Now from the eye test, we can see that Van Dijk is a bit of a unit and that probably explains why he is reluctant to run with it. A player of his size if he becomes too predictable and prone to running with the ball, he's going to end up getting caught on the ball as he's not going to be elusive enough. His agility just isn't going to match up to the liberos of the past. In addition, his footwork isn't particularly electrifying. Personally, I think a PK surpasses him in this respect. Nevertheless, once Van Dijk gets going, he's a powerhouse who's difficult to bring down. His caressing with the outside of the foot is technically astute. And he is at times capable of swift feints and changes in direction which can elude opponents when they least expect it. In terms of shielding the ball, he's adept and he brings his side extra time when under pressure, not surprising when you consider his size. Interestingly, post-injury Van Dijk not surprisingly stopped running with the ball as much and yet this season despite being 32 years old, he's progressing the game more than ever before which suggests that there's been a mental shift in his game to accept more responsibility with the progression of the ball and perhaps there's a feeling now that he himself is more comfortable and confident in his body again. The youngest incidentally, Ben Woodburn. Ben for the Manchester City goalkeeper. Yeah, and Edison hasn't been as neat and tidy with his footwork in recent times. In terms of long passing, we can see that Van Dijk attempts the most long passes amongst his peers and with a 64% success rate, more often than not, he absolutely nails them. Now, from the eye test, we can see that he doesn't take on easy switches of play or hits them slowly, passively, with little risk. He's pinging them with pace to an inch of perfection. His favoured pass is out to the right, which is why being at left centre-back is perfect for him as he can shift back onto that right and set up that driven, lofted lace pass 
with outside swerve to the likes of Trent or Salah. He's not particularly bad going the other way either and he's also got an underrated weak foot which allows him to pass down the line to his left winger or someone like Nunes now who runs the channels. I'd say he's a more reliable long passer than a Rio Ferdinand whose vertical passes were excellent but in terms of switches of play I prefer Van Dijk's technique who's more closer to a John Terry who in my opinion was an outstanding long passer with either foot. In all but one match this season. That was a nil-nil draw against Manchester United when they had 34 attempts on goal and didn't get towards... Now onto a section where Van Dijk has stood head and shoulders above his rivals in the modern generation. Positional, defending, his defensive IQ, sense of danger and awareness has pretty much been exemplary since his days at Celtic where even against the likes of Iniesta, Neymar, he was able to stand out as the main obstacle in defence thus proving he can perform in a low block as well as a high line. Van Dijk oozes composure and that allows him to retain an air of calm even under the utmost of pressure, which is why he's rarely been part of any defensive collapses. The one that really comes to mind is that Villa debacle, but generally Van Dijk is accomplished at providing depth, cover due to his ability to cover large swathes of terrain, win any loose aerial balls from overhit balls and use his strength in any shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder tussles with a player bearing down on goal or charging down the flanks. A slight weakness that he has is the ability to block crosses which are hit low across the ground. His legs can be quite slow to react to that compared to a Rio who is quicker at blocking out those type of drilled passes. But in the box, Van Dijk is alert, he's reactive and he's quite subtle in terms of how he goes about his work, producing blocks, nipping in just when the opponent is about to shoot. They can be quite easy to ignore because he's not that demonstrative. He also has a good smell as to when to step up and win the ball higher up the pitch, intercepting high up the pitch. Against stronger physical opponents, he can give away fouls but it's done in a way where very little blood is spilled and it evades the attention of the referee. Generally, Van Dijk is a very clean defender who doesn't really look to hurt opponents. He's never in a real comfortable position there. Never really set himself to shoot a goal. In all but one match this season. That was a nil-nil draw against Manchester United when they had 34 attempts on goal and didn't get towards... Talking about being clean, Van Dijk is reluctant to go to ground when seeking to win the ball, especially post-knee injury. He prefers to do his defensive work standing up. In fact, it's quite comical how little tackles he makes, despite being renowned as one of the world's leading centre-backs. And it's because he doesn't really need to. Quite often, he can just muscle out players and get the job done with a little shrug like taking candy from a baby and he's similar to a Rio and Ledley King in that sense. When he does go to grind, it's usually a very quick stab type of tackle where he's back up before he's even had the chance to slide on the ground and it makes sense. A man of that size doesn't really want to overcommit as it could prove difficult to get back up and if there's a running theme about Van Dijk, he's a man of utmost calculation who minimises risk across the board. For him, a slide tackle is a risk. He'd rather play the odds standing up and force his opponent to perform something from a difficult situation rather than open himself up to be exposed. If there is a defensive weakness, I'd say players with fast feet, making sharp movements in tight spaces or making unexpected runs in behind can at times move too quickly for Van Dijk to react to. The likes of Suarez, Benzema and Osman have had moments where they've got the better of him. Martial in this clip totally turned him inside out when he was at Southampton and more agile. So for me, the notion of Van Dijk being an all-time centre-back is in theory flawed because I can't imagine him locking off a prime Ronaldo or Romario type of forward. He doesn't have the mobility in tight spaces to handle it. I think he's been somewhat fortunate that his main nemesis at the moment is a Haaland type of striker who's big, strong, all vertical speed and not really that elusive, which plays into Van Dijk's hands. I think someone like a prime Thierry Henry would be a much bigger threat to Van Dijk inside the box with his trickery. Hey guys, wondering what software we use to produce the state-of-the-art Telestration graphics software on this video? Download Play by Metrica Sports, the essential tool for every coach and analyst. Use the link in the description to access Metrica's website and then apply the code Pythagoras in Boots at the checkout for a 10% discount. Third. In from McAllister and Kaminsky with a flying stop. Aerily, Van Dijk is a colossus. You compare him to Saliba who seems very reliant on a Gabriel against physical opponents and Van Dijk doesn't need his handheld 
the same way. Despite being a ball-playing centre-back himself, he's comfortable with the rough stuff. He can intimidate opponents with his size, his timing in the air and his regal aura when the ball is in the sky. This is a man whose header can travel half the pitch and generate chances. He's a bit of a cheat code because where are you realistically going to find forwards his size who can challenge him in the air and with his level of willingness to compete for the ball? This for me is where he differs to a Rio Ferdinand who would get dominated by Drogba in the air and thus left it to Vidic to deal with whereas he could just sweep. Van Dijk is also a goal threat too. He's a focal presence at set pieces and a match winner. He hasn't made the most of his assets from set pieces across the course of his career, but this season we've seen some iconic moments from Van Dijk and he's channeled the likes of Terry, Thiago Silva in making the most of his forays forward. McAllister and Kaminsky in from Alexander-Arnold and Romeo is a couple of yards off the centre-back when he gets the shot. In terms of goal threat, let us be honest, Van Dijk is no Ronald Koeman. Now, that may come as a surprise actually to those who've seen Van Dijk shooting with the likes of Pro Direct against Harry Pinheiro or when he's taken on the F2 freestylers. In those videos, he strikes shots extremely well from range and you'd almost argue that he could be Liverpool's designated free kick taker. But in professional football, in open play, Van Dijk very rarely gallops forward and has a strike from range. And on the rare occasions that he has done that, well, he's not really caught the eye. So is it nerves? Is it a reluctance to score goals? I'm not too sure, but, you know, he's age 32 now. It's unlikely that Van Dijk is suddenly going to transform into a rampant, roaming centre-back that's going to rival Passarella and start banging in goals from open play. But Van Dijk does have more ability than what he's shown over the course of his career. In from Alexander-Arnold. Tony got the touch ahead of his keeper. Tactically, Liverpool in possession were famed for their uber-aggressive 2-3-5 and Van Dijk was an integral component in allowing Klopp to play in such a setup, safe in the knowledge that he possessed the best high-line centre-back in the world. Liverpool have now adjusted to a box midfield which emphasises more control than pure overlaps, so Liverpool are less likely to face counter-attacks, but Van Dijk is still having to defend in a 2 in most games Although when Joe Gomez plays, there is at times a back three, which gives Van Dijk more protection. In conclusion, Van Dijk doesn't do enough in possession or have enough of a resume against great players to put him amongst the GOAT defenders of all time. Just yet, if you look at the footage of Scoria, Beckenbauer, you can see that they're different gravy in possession. You look at someone like Figueroa, who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Gerd Muller, Maradona, Zico and was seen as South America's premier centre-back in a golden age of attacking talent. Not to mention someone like Baresi, who with a serious knee injury way past his prime was locking off a prime Romario. So for me it's very premature to put Van Dijk in that tier of the best centre-back ever. For me it's actually disrespectful to the history of the game and it shows a lack of research. If you're keeping the discussion to just Premier League centre-backs, for me he has to be considered amongst the best. And if he wins the title this year and he grabs a Champions League in the future again or stars at the Euros, then that could potentially push him to the top of the pile. As we currently stand, I think it's a tight call between him, Terry, Rio. And that's even before we consider the likes of Stam and McGrath, who are very unlucky not to have a longer tenure in the Premier League era. Going back even further and English league wise, I think the likes of Alan Hansen, Bobby Moore, I think personally have superior resumes. Now, just in terms of the comparisons of his attributes, I see Rio as a better ground defender, Terry superior in the air, and in terms of leadership, Bobby Moore a better ball player. But for me, where Van Dijk stands out is that he's a, not de facto the best, but I think he's arguably the most complete centre-back that the Premier League has ever seen. And the only competitors in that respect are Yapstam and Paul McGrath. Most great centre-backs need a partner in crime who's almost their equal but a polar opposite in terms of style. Van Dijk's carried rather mediocre centre-backs in the historical sense in Matip, Gomez, Lovren to unprecedented heights. Now that's not to say that they didn't play integral roles or play out their skin but his calmness seemed to provide a sense of chill to that Liverpool backline that allowed them to hit the heights that they did. And it's an intangible quality that's absolutely worth its weight in gold. And I can tell you, as a United fan, pre-Vidic, 
I don't think Rio was able to give that United defence that same sense of dominance that Van Dijk has given Liverpool. I think Van Dijk's aerial prowess is the key here as it allows him to be a real Terry hybrid and that means he can handle the long ball. He can play out from the back, he can sweep, he can hold a high line and he can box defend too. He can do it all and even if all these individual attributes in theory might not he might not be the best at each of them, he's at bare minimum going to be an 8 out of 10 at all of them and with such little obvious flaws in his game, for me he has to be the most complete defender in EPL history. But the best Still too early to say just yet as the next three to five years could really define his legacy. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.